Hey, welcome back. This is part three of the ZBrush 101. Today, we're going to take a look at Dynamesh and more importantly, Sculptress Pro. Now, something that's worth noting is remember the like Dynamesh, Sculptress Pro, these things are just tools in your tool belt. Some artists will use them all the time. Some artists will just use Dynamesh. Some will just use Sculptress Pro. Some will use both. Some won't even use either of these and that's okay. So think about your end product in mind. If you're sculpting a character, I don't want you to worry about how you got there. Sure, there are more efficient ways to do something. There might be better ways to do something, but as long as you get that end result, it shouldn't really matter to you how you got there at this stage in the learning process. I've dropped in a Dynamesh sphere. I am going to grab the move brush. So we need to lay the foundation a little bit here and talk about some concepts. I'm going to press M for move. I'm going to use move topological. This is polyframe. And with this move brush, I pull, 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 and then things start to break apart because literally I'm just grabbing those polys and stretching them. So that makes sense that eventually it's going to break apart. Under geometry, if we press divide, this is gonna kind of smooth that out. And if I toggle this on and off again, you'll see that each polygon has actually been divided by four. And if I were to press this again, for whatever reason, I have to toggle this on and off. Now, each polygon again is divided by four. So my active points are increasing. I'm increasing the number of polygons. And now with more polygons, I'll be able to come in here and then pull and get more out of this, so to speak. Now it's starting to fall apart, it's stretching, but I was able to go a longer distance before it fell apart. I'm gonna undo that. I tell you that because there's just, this is not a good approach to do what I just showed you there, but that's what's going on under the hood. So now I'm back to that Dynamesh sphere. By default, Dynamesh is just turned on with the Dynamesh sphere. So I'm gonna use that same brush and I'm going to pull, pull, and then it's stretching the polygons that we can see. When it starts to fall apart, I can one, toggle this on or off, and boom, if I turn it back on, it's scattered roughly the same size polygons throughout my whole mesh, which is pretty cool, which means, oh, I can just keep on going. Let's go further, further, further. Now, instead of toggling this on and off, I'm gonna hold control, left click and drag outside of my mesh. What does that mean practically? Well, that means that you could use snake hook. I'm gonna press S, grab snake hook. This actually says, hey, it's best with Sculptures Pro. We'll get there, I promise. We're gonna need a larger draw size. Let's like pull out the arms of my character. Dynamesh. Yay, and now I have more geometry. Let's pull out these little legs. Dynamesh. So I could just keep doing this when the stuff starts to break apart. Dynamesh, and now I've got more geometry. Resolution is important. So if I have a super low resolution and then I alter my mesh, then Dynamesh, you'll see polygons are much larger. Never do this. Never just pull this to 4096. It's gonna crash your computer. So let's pull it up a little bit more. Dynamesh, yeah, it's looking good. Eventually you might need more detail. Is your pull, pull, pull. Let's bump that up to 200 ish. There we go. And now I have very dense detail. So even between zero and 200 in this example, I've got plenty of geometry to work with. But note that it's applying the those same polygons throughout the whole mesh. Another cool thing about Dynamesh is the following go to Subtool, go to Insert, insert another piece of geometry. I've got this subtool and the sphere. I'm going to turn off polyframe for now. And let's say this is just another piece of this character's face or something. One thing to note, if I'm sculpting on this, currently symmetry is not turned on for this subtool. It is for this subtool. But if I hold Alt, left click, and tap this geometry, or I can just select it over here. Symmetry is not on. That's under Transform. Activate Symmetry if you want it on. We know about Dynamesh. I'm going to go ahead and Dynamesh this real quick. Here we go. Smooth that out. Great. So I've got these two chunks. In my Subtool palette, I'm going to go to the top one, go down to Merge, and press Merge Down. Just hit Always OK. That's fine. Now, this is Merge those two subtools into one subtool. But if we take a look here, they're not really behaving as one mesh. Like they're still separate when I smooth. If I go to move topological, I'm just moving this one in a brush the size it should move both things, but it's not. There's still technically two pieces here. That's where we can Dynamesh. So take a look at this. Two pieces, merge the subtools, control, left click and drag to do that Dynamesh. And then this has actually welded that together. Now I can smooth that out. And when I move, it's all one piece. This has been fused together. One piece, good to go. You can block out a character. You can Dynamesh it together. Pretty neat. Now let's take a look at Sculptures Pro. I'm gonna go to Lightbox. Let's double click the Dynamesh sphere. No, I I don't want to change or don't want to save. We actually cannot stay with the move brush. Some tools you cannot use Sculptures Pro. I'm going to go grab the snake hook. These are all recent brushes that I've used. And this actually tells us about Sculptures Pro. Now, by default, this has a red cursor. Anytime I have Sculptures Pro on a brush that'll work, this will be a purple cursor. I'm going to pull, pull, pull. It's falling apart, right? But take a look at this. With Sculptures Pro mode on, I can pull, 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 do the same thing. I'm just left clicking and dragging. 
take a look at that. Look how much detail I'm able to have. And let's see what's going on. Press polyframe. This was just stretching the geometry when it was off. Sculptures Pro is actually doing something pretty darn cool. It's adding geometry as I go. Unlike Dynamesh, which scatters that geometry throughout the whole thing, this only has geometry where I need it. And in this case, it was right here. And it's just adding geometry. Eventually, it will fall apart. I uh, that, right? It fell apart. But this is what I always tell beginners to start using. Use Sculptures Pro because you don't have to worry about a whole lot. You just kind of sculpt. Lots of brushes will be able to use Sculptures Pro. Some of them are clay buildup. And that brings us to our next cool thing about Sculptures Pro is that it's dependent upon the draw size. A super large draw size is going to give me large polygons and a small draw size is going to give me very dense polygons, which is great for detailing. But it's only dense in that area. So I'm kind of conserving polygons with Dynamesh. It scatter the same amount of polygons through everything. So Shift will actually do the same thing. It's going to use Sculptures Pro as long as this is on. So holding Shift to smooth with a large brush gives me large polygons and it's kind of going to destroy the detail. But that can be useful because I can hold Shift way out here and kind of erase these appendages. Be careful because you do too much and you lost your whole character. Or if I hold shift with a smaller brush size, it's smoothing and it's adding these smaller, it's adding those dense polygons. Now, one thing you can do, if you have a sphere with large polygons, right? I've got giant polygons back here. And then you try to sculpt on this with a smaller brush. It actually just didn't work at all. So what you can do, get yourself a medium sized brush, do some smoothing. So I'm kind of prepping the surface. It, it does smooth that out. But then with a smaller brush size, since there's more dense polygons, it's actually going to work really, really well. And I can do whatever details that I want. All right, homework time. Right after this video is over, I need you to go make an octopus. I'm not going to give you step-by-step step how to do this. Use Snake Hook, use Sculptures Pro, use Clay Buildup. I'm going to get a big draw size. Let's just kind of squash this head a little bit. Don't even use reference. It doesn't matter. There we go. That's going to be an alien squid thing. Let's go ahead and pull out some tentacles. That's your homework. Make some sort of crazy sea monster alien. Try Sculptures Pro. Try Dynamesh. Have a good time with it.